Chapter 8 Queen of the Field Mice While the Tin One Man and the Scarecrow were waiting patiently for Dorothy and Toto to wake up, they heard a loud, low growl. The Tin One Man, who could turn his head in a complete circle because of his hinges, looked behind them. A ferocious looking wildcat was running across the grass right at them. The Tin One Man thought the wildcat was after them until he saw a pretty little field mouse just in front of the wildcat, frantically trying to escape. He thought it terrible that such a large cat would chase a helpless little mouse, so he threw his axe right in front of the wildcat, slicing off his whiskers. That scared it so badly it ran away. Thank you for saving my life, squeaked the mouse. How can I repeat you? I am the queen of the field mice. As she spoke, thousands of mice ran over and began bowing to the queen, Toto. Now awake, got so excited that he started barking and chasing mice just like he used to do in Kansas. The mice scattered instantly. So the Tin One Man picked Toto up and held him tightly in his arms. We told the queen not to worry. She would be safe. Timidly, the queen of the field mice crept back, repeating her offer to help. I don't know of anything you could, the Tin One Man began, but the scarecrow excitedly interrupted. Yes, there is, he crowned. Could you please help us get our friend the Cowardly Lion out of the poppy field? He is quite a scared fellow, so he won't hurt you. Besides, he's asleep on the scent of the poppies. The queen agreed, and everyone followed the scarecrow's plan. The tin one man built a big platform, big enough for the cowardly lion, and made wheels for it. The mice ran off to get one piece of string each. Then they tied themselves to the new cart and pulled it to the field of poppies. When they got to the cowardly lion, the scarecrow and the tin one man pushed and pulled on him until they finally managed to get him onto the cart. Right away, the mice began to pull, but nothing happened. They pulled with all their might. But the cowardly lion was just too heavy. They were in trouble because now the mice were beginning to tire from the smell of poppies. One last time, the tin one man and the scarecrow pushed while the mice pulled yet again. The cart moved a little, then a little more, then it started to roll faster and faster. They reached the edge of the field and kept going until they reached Dorothy, who was finally awake. She was amazed at the sight coming toward her. The queen of the field mice was still grateful to the tin woman for saving her life. She gave him a tiny whistle to call her with he ever needed her again. Then the mice left and the cobbly lion's friend waited for him to wake up.